Um, I'm here to inform you that no drugs were involved during the production of, um, Shiver Star Investigation. These are all just raw thoughts, bro. Chances are, you probably heard about a particular world being a bit cursed and spooky in that Kirby 64 game from over 20 years ago. Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards. I'm sure there's at least a whopping five people alive right now who still care about this game. Shiver Star. What is up with Shiver Star? Well, today, we'll find out. Or at least attempt to, I don't know. Oh, and, uh, Merry Crimbles. Snow. Depending on where you live, you might not know what this is, so I'll tell you. A mass flickering of white spots on a television or radar screen caused by interference or a poor signal. Mislead or charm someone with elaborate and insincere words. Ah, uh, here we go. Atmospheric water vapor frozen into ice crystals and falling in light white flakes or lying on the ground is a white layer. So, this snow stuff, when does it come? Well, for most of us, it comes during a time of the year called winter. Winter is a season! Please pay attention, this should all be brand new to you. Besides the cold weather and the depressing reality that it turns pitch black at 4pm, winter is fun and cool. It's always an interesting time of year. Also, a lot of fun activities come along with it too, like skiing, snowboarding, throwing clumps of snow at your buddies, eating the yellow piles, it's always a good time. But yeah, I'm glad it's a short period of the year and doesn't last long. The cold weather and the depressing reality that it turns pitch black at 4pm kinda outweighs all the good of it in my opinion. Four main seasons, we all know that. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. And I think we can all agree that winter is the biggest contrast compared to all the other seasons. Everything suddenly turns unbearably cold, and once it snows, you'll no longer be able to see green. Everything is... White. Just kidding, I don't pronounce it like that, I have morals! Since winter contrasts so much against everything else, it's always a popular theme for developers to throw into areas of their games to make them a little interesting, you know? But it's not always just the visuals that are different. A lot of stuff, for lack of better words, tends to be exclusive to winter-themed areas, like snowboarding, which, of course, can allow for some cool and unique level design. I'd say the most overused winter-themed level design aspect in video games would have to be ice. Slippery floors, slippery, icy floors, how fun. We all love these, right? Also important to note that a lot of these winter areas and games follow the exact same cliches. Stuff like ice, getting stuck in snow and it being difficult to move, snowmen, Christmassy sounding music, freezing cold water, the list goes on. But I wouldn't call any of this stuff boring. Winter themed areas are just a really popular video game thing that we've all grown to love and accept. Or hey, I don't know what you think. It's one of those must-have things in video games at this point, especially Nintendo games. Of course, there are some exceptions. I was personally surprised there weren't a lot of snowy areas in Big Brain Academy. Did you know Kirby Air Ride was gonna be a Nintendo 64 game? Kirby's Air Ride, with an apostrophe S of course. An early version was shown at E3 1996, but then they're all like, nah, we'll save this idea for the future, and thank god they did. So yeah, that was scrapped. In September 1997, development began in a brand new Kirby game for the Nintendo 64 disk drive. But because the Nintendo 64 disk drive was a funny joke nobody wanted to own, the game was just gonna be made for the regular good old Nintendo 64. Judging from the pre-release stuff, they had some grand ideas for this game, but unfortunately, a lot of that stuff didn't make the final cut. Possibly due to time constraints. You were originally going to be able to play as all the characters, not just the pink ball. Except for Ribbon. We got some screenshots of a playable Waddle D, DDD, and Adeline. The concept art too, oh man, we were supposed to be getting a space stage! We'd even go riding on a whale! The final game we got is fine. I guess. I mean, me, personally, Kirby 64 is one of my favorite games of all time, but... That is most definitely the nostalgia goggles talking. If you want to look at this game objectively, it's pretty mediocre. However, it's pretty. And I will always stand by that. The art style they went for, mm, so good, dude. This game is by far the greatest looking game on the Nintendo 64. No other game even came close. Of course, it had the advantage of coming out really late, but still... It holds the title. I don't want to hear any counter arguments. Kirby 64 takes the prize. This game did a great job with theming too. The areas are beautiful. The Autumn Stage in Popstar, the Caverns in Rockstar, Aquastar was a great beachy themed world, Neostar all gritty and rocky, you finish it off with a volcano, and then... Shiverstar. What is that sh**? Only one way to find out, I guess. Let's play some Kirby 64. Nintendo 64 or Wii? What should I play this game on? Now, of course, Nintendo 64 would be more... 
Authentic. But Wii would give me faster load times and better video output, so that settles it. We'll be playing on Wii. Oh yeah, and you can moonwalk. Only problem is this game feels so much better with a Nintendo 64 controller, dude. I'm gonna have to play with a GameCube controller. I'll need to use the joystick when this game was clearly intended to be played with a D-pad. Now you're probably thinking, what are you talking about? The GameCube controller is a D-pad. This is not a D-pad, this is a tumor. Start up, start my new file. Oh yeah, it's... Christmas, isn't it? Sometimes I forget this game has some extra HUD styles you can pick from. I chose option 3 because it kinda matches the Christmas theme, wouldn't you say? Kirby's so wholesome 100, look at that, he just wants to save the world of the pure boredom. I should probably mention this in case you aren't already aware. I've played this game to death. I'm probably one of the only humans in the world to be able to say this is one of my most played video games of all time. Why? Well, I used to do speedruns of it quite a bit. 90% though, never 100%. So I never got all these shards and fought zero too. The runs always stopped at Miracle Matter. Today, we're gonna be playing through this game 100%. While I don't really know any of the 100% speedrun stuff, I do, of course, still know how to get every shard because I still have played this game an embarrassing amount. If it wasn't second nature for me at this point, I'd be a bit concerned. I did some gaming, you know, Popstar, Rockstar, Aquastar, and Neostar, collecting all the shards with the occasional backtracking and all. Fifth try Rick statue in Aquastar, by the way, if you're one of those people who cares. Also, why do they call the worlds in this game levels? If these are levels, then what the f*** are these? You know what we should talk about? The cutscenes. All the ones up until... That. We gotta understand what's going on here, man. We gotta understand the lore! When you start the game up before you even go to the file select screen, you get this cutscene. A little glimpse into life on Ripple Star. Right before Dark Matter comes and f***s everything up. The little fairy, Ribbon, needs to save the day or something, so she flies away on this giant crystal and gets chased by some more Dark Matter. She gets knocked off the crystal and lands in Popstar. Once you start the file, you see the next cutscene, where Ribbon lands and coincidentally happens to end up right next to Kirby. Kirby's like, hey, over here, and they combine the crystals they each have. So... In order to save Ripple Star, well, you gotta find them all, of course. They run off into the sunrise and the game starts. At the end of the first level, no, not the entirety of Popstar like the game wants you to think, the actual first level, a Waddle Dee gets possessed by some dark matter and turns into a Waddle Dee. Hmm, that's how they're formed, I guess. You then battle him out and knock that shit out of him and he's a regular good old Waddle Dee again. He joins you on your adventure. At the end of the second level, Adeline is painting and also gets possessed by some dark matter. Well, at least it's censored. Same shit happens, she's pretty damn weak, get the dark matter out, and she also joins you on the adventure. At the end of the third level, DDD finds a crystal and Kirby attempts to grab it, but DDD is a greedy piece of shit who wants it for himself because it's a cool shiny object. Then Karma bites him in the ass, you guessed it, dark matter comes and f***s him up. You then battle him, get the dark matter out, and after some hesitation, he decides to also join in on the adventure. Probably because he remembered getting Karma the first time and didn't want it to happen again. I don't trust this penguin man, he always seems in it for himself. After fighting Wispy and completing Bob Popstar, the shards open up a portal to the next world. Rockstar. After Rockstar, they're all suffering in the desert and need some food. Thankfully, Adeline is able to paint some into existence. Another portal opens up, and this is where the creators of the game just gave up with the music buns. Unless there's some sort of genre called Aqua that I'm unaware about. Maybe some, like, ambient water music type shit. I don't, I don't know. Let me know if there are any Aqua Stars out there. They head off to Aqua Star while Kirby is completely oblivious. After Aqua Star, the squad is throwing some rocks on the beach. Kirby, being oblivious again, doesn't realize a giant wave is coming and gets tossed in. Another portal opens up to Neo Star, and they head off there. After Neo Star, the volcano erupts. So of course, they gotta get out of there as quick as they can. A portal opens up to the next world as Waddle Dee struggles to jump in. Kirby's solution to the problem is to put Waddle Dee in his mouth. The next world. <laughs> the next world, yes. What is this so-called next world? called? Oh well, it's called Shiverstar and it looks like this. Holy sh! it's Mars! This is Earth. This is the texture mapped on the sphere. It's our world! Now, of course, they could have just gotten lazy and mapped a generic world texture on here, but I think it's more than that. This is very clearly Earth, and I think they want everyone to know this. Uh, think about it. They could have just made their own texture with some fake continent shapes, but no. Uh, still not convinced? Okay. Then explain why this planet in particular has one singular moon revolving around it. It's Earth, dude! I'm 99% sure this was intentional. The chances of this all being a coincidence seems way too slim. But why? Why would this be Earth? Were the developers planning some shit? Were they trying to tell us something? Nah, I think we're fine. It's been a solid 20 years. So in Kirby 64, each world... 
I'm not calling these levels. I'm not calling this level. I'm not calling these sub-levels. I'm not doing it. Each world has four levels in the boss, with the exception of the first and last world, Popstar and Ripple Star, respectively. That being said, we got four levels to explore and analyze here in Earth. I mean Shiver Star, and the boss of course. 5-1, the first level of Shiver Star, and wow, it looks like a completely generic snow level, that's pretty underwhelming. Generic, happy, wintery video game music, but I grew to love the Shiver Star theme, so I can't really complain much. So yeah, first room here is just snow, trees, and enemies. Everything seems relatively normal. Next, you do some climbing in one of the shortest rooms in the game, but that brings you to the final Waddle Dee section of the game. Unless you want to count Waddle Dee telling you to jump down the hole in Ripple Star. This time, you go sledding with him. In order to get the first shard here, you have to make sure you land the jump on one of the igloos. During this section, we have a better view of the sky, and we can see it's all just... gray. Just completely dull gray. After crashing, you land inside an igloo where you fight the mini-boss for this stage, a chili, while a bunch of, uh, fridges try to attack you. There's a shard in this room. It's stuck inside some ice at the top, so you need to melt the ice with some sort of fire ability. Next is a room with ice and a bunch of... Ice cream cones? The final shard for the stage is here, you have to go exploring a little bit under the ice. In the last room, you climb a bit while trying to avoid being crushed. And there's a witch at the end. Hmm. 5-2. The level where you go up in the clouds while a banger track plays in the background. This is the best version of the butter building theme in any Kirby game. You will not be able to change my mind. I think it's worth mentioning that if you take a look at this concept art piece for the game, it seems this stage was supposed to have a giant spider web you'd climb, but... Nah, we don't have that here. First room, there's like a giant cake. You get a 30th of a 1-up as a reward for walking to the other side. How awesome. Nothing to do here besides grab that star or jump into the... Z-Bon. You get launched up into the clouds. Now you just do some generic Kirby platforming stuff up here. There's a shard to grab that's hard to miss. In the background, you can see what appears to be the same mountains from the first level, so it's likely that the stage takes place above that area, or at least near it. Oh yeah, and there's a bunch of crystals and stars for some reason. What can it mean? Nothing. It's just typical Kirby design stuff. The level would look really boring without it. Just aesthetic stuff, it ain't that deep. Next room, you jump into a Z-Bon, which shoots you into another Z-Bon, which shoots you into another Z-Bon. You then have a bunch of choices where to go! Ooh. All you need to know is that one will send you to a shard, and another will allow you to continue with the level. Now we're really high up, dude. Nope, Kirby can breathe fine. Just generic platforming stuff. Next room, you gotta avoid these munchy things. Mao. Do you think there's a single human out there who has the names of all these enemies memorized? And lastly, the mini-boss. My least favorite in the entire game. It can be really annoying for speedruns, gives me flashbacks. A shard in this room, in order to get it, well, I sure hope you carry the spike and electric ability combination throughout the entire stage. No? Well, that sucks. Try again. 5-3, the mall, the toy factory, whatever you want to call it. Last level was a bit of a dreamy escape, but now we're back to reality. This stage is probably the most nostalgic video game area ever to me. I'm quite fond of it. You start outside, everything is covered in snow, of course. The generic Shiver Star theme that played in the first level plays throughout the entirety of this one. Besides the mini-boss, of course, I think that goes without saying. And if you go on the roof area, you get a little piece of cake. The first room inside, you climb a bunch of escalators while avoiding stuff. A very hard to miss shard here as well. Next, instead of escalators, you're going on elevators, going from one floor to another, going through mini platforming sections with our favorite enemies like Bootleg Thwomp. The mini-boss is a giant... Poopa. Who the f*** named these? If you think the names of the enemies in this game are odd, wait until you see the name of the torpedo! You get a shard here, and next is... an Adeline puzzle! She draws some fruit, and then you have to push the buttons that match the color of said fruit. This might sound easy, but... What the f*** is that? Next room is some more platforming, some shelves will try to crush you, and frogs will try to eat you. Then lastly, you evade some cannons like you would taxes and beat the stage. I'm bored. Thought this was gonna be spooky and scary. This is just some generic snow world. Surely the next stage won't change that. 5-4. It's a factory! The regular good old Shiver Star theme playing here, of course. We see a bit of a city in the background. Everything is fine. Let's jump down this hole and go inside the factory. I'm scared. Yeah, the music changes. We're in an evil factory now, just like that. In order to get the first shard, you need the drill ability. The next room has you in the back of DDD running backwards on a conveyor belt. Here we can see that this factory really wants you dead. You have to be really careful not to get crushed by these robots. Next up, oh lord, we see a bigger something floating in the machine behind us. What? That's a that's a pig, right? A bird in the machine, a cat in the machine, even a fucking witch. Yeah, it is really bizarre. Next room is a mini boss. It's a burnus. 
Yes, totally. There's a shard here in the cage. Only way to break the cage is to use the lightsaber ability. Next room. Yeah, uh, they're pulling up the big guns. You know, they bring artillery. Cannons are shooting at you, and the ceiling is trying to crush you. It seems as if nobody is meant to see what's going on down here. And if you do, well, <laughs> you can't come out alive, of course. If you manage to make it through the room, you have one more left, and you're out of the factory. This one attempts to kill you with some robots pushing walls inward against you. Oh yeah, and there's a shard here, by the way. And if you make it through that, well... The factory failed to complete its obvious goal, and you're safe! Right? Not quite. Now it's time for the boss, Bobby. The final attempt to exterminate you, HR, Human Resources. It's two phases, two forms, HRH and HRE. The background is a city. It's actually really vaporwavy and aesthetic. During the first phase, it'll try to slap you, crush you, shoot lasers. The second phase starts shooting rockets at you and uses its claws to try and hit you. But if you finally manage to take them down, now you're all set. A shard comes out, the final shard of Shiver Star. From here, you're on to Ripple Star to hopefully uh, save the day or whatever. Ripple Star, you just go through the three levels. Second stage is a little creepy, I gotta tell ya. Fight Miracle Matter, go do Dark Star if you gall the shards because you know you actually want to beat the game. You fight Zero Two, and boom, game's over. Whenever I look at all the plans in this game Pop Star, Rock Star, Aqua Star, Neo Star, Shiver Star, Ripple Star, and Dark Star, one stands out like a sore thumb. One of them feels completely disconnected from the rest of the game. That one being Popstar. Like, come on, this does not belong in the Kirby game. Boo. No, Shiverstar. Shiverstar is bizarre. Holy sh! You suck. It is very clearly meant to represent a version of planet Earth. It has a fucking texture of Earth mapped on it. One moon orbiting around it. And if that's still not enough for you, the final boss is named Human Resources. No, not weird Kirby character resources. Human resources. Human! Oh, but what about Adeline, the fairies? Shut up! Shut the f*** up! So this is Earth, right? We all agree? Alright, cool. So why is it like this? What happened here? So something that confused me at first is what the plant looks like. It's completely gray, as if snow is the only thing on it. But when you go into the stages, everything looks... Fairly normal, just looks like an ordinary snowy day, huh? I've seen some people make comments about how they believe Shiverstar takes place during the Ice Age, but no, I, I don't think they had cities and giant laser shooting robots then. The most popular theory is that this is Earth, but after some sort of apocalypse, like a nuclear winter. This makes a lot more sense, and this overall theory is the one I tend to agree with. And going back to how gray the model of the plant looks, I don't think it's that deep. It's just supposed to symbolize the planet. It's snowy, so make it gray. Boom. Done. Is Popstar actually just a giant yellow star? No, moving on. The mall toy factory area feels very odd. Seems it would have been a very lively place full of humans, but no! Instead, it's infested with a bunch of non-human entities. A toy factory, huh? No, I'm gonna stop referring to it as that. Well, I have seen this area referred to countless times as the toy factory. I gotta disagree, I'm still convinced this area is supposed to represent a shopping mall of some sort, made by humans who used to live here. The escalators, the elevators, the TVs, the exterior, and how the place looks in general. I personally believe this area was a shopping mall, but now that all the humans are gone, all these weird, non-human things took it over for themselves. Then what about the factory? Was this made by humans as well? Yeah, for sure. Same thing must have happened here as the mall. Humans gone, weird dudes take it over. The robots, however, I do believe they were here when the humans were present. They were definitely man-made. Do you think this thing could build a robot? It seems like this factory is where a lot of awful, horrid, evil, dangerous experiments took place. And the humans didn't want anybody to see. Look how fun and quirky this place looks outside. Looks similar to the mall. <laughs> don't let that fool you though, it's all just a front. Please don't enter. And if you do, well, sorry. Now you know too much. And all these robots are here after you to make sure you don't make it out alive. Some pretty dark shit, right? Well, if they were really trying to keep this place locked down, why was Kirby able to get in so easily? Well, I'd have to assume that's just how the place was left before the humans ruined it all. This disaster was most definitely man-made, and the fact that this factory is such a huge part of Shiver Star leads me to believe that something went horribly wrong here and turned the world into a winter wonderland while simultaneously wiping out the entire human population. I swear I'm not on drugs. Well, I do think it's very possible this world is supposed to represent Earth in the future after a catastrophic event. Unfortunately, our world is full of evil, shitty people, and a lot of these people have the power to cause colossal damage as well. And those fucked up experiments going on in the factories? That's not all fictional either. Plenty of shit like that happens all the time in the real world. And some idiot could slip their finger, push the wrong button, and turn Kirby 64's depiction of the Earth into a reality. Oh, uh, um... Merry Christmas!